All right, so today is the one-way ANOVA cell means approach. I will, in total, be showing two ways of setting up the ANOVA. There's too much to squeeze into one day, so we're splitting it up over two days. So make sure you're ready for this. Um, basically, make sure you're super comfortable with the two-sample t-test because the two-sample t-test actually is a one-way ANOVA, and even more related to this, it's a one-way ANOVA using cell means. So go back. Well, actually, the one way I showed was using cell means. The first way of the three ways that I showed for doing a two-sample t-test is the cell means approach. So please review that and make sure you're really comfortable with it. So, right, in total, I will cover a one-way ANOVA and a two-way ANOVA. Um, the one-way ANOVA, you can think of it as having um, just different groups over which you're looking at the means for something. So it could be average reaction time over uh, different groups of uh, subjects, maybe three patient groups and one control group. Here I have a two-way ANOVA. Um, so here you could think of B as being gender, male and female, and A could be patients and uh, two groups of patients and one group of controls. So we'll get to the two-way ANOVA in a couple of days, but we're focusing on the one-way ANOVA today. Specifically, we're gonna focus on the cell means approach. So perhaps you've taken an ANOVA course and maybe this formula looks a little bit familiar. So what this is saying is that for subject, for the nth subject, um, relating to the i-th level of your ANOVA. Uh, the equation is mu i plus epsilon i n. So this is just reflecting that each cell in our ANOVA has a separate mean. So if I go back here, that's why I put these little cells. So you have the mean for the first patient group, the mean for the second patient group, the mean for your controls. That's specifically what this model is doing. So the regressors, which I will often call EVs, sorry, it is FSL specific, but um, it stands for explanatory variable. It's just much easier to say EV. The regressors for this setup are really easy, but the contrast can be much trickier. So that's why I'm giving you two ways of doing it. It depends on what your hypothesis is that you're interested in testing. One of these models might be easier to set up depending on your hypothesis. The factor effects has this different structure, which I'll cover next time. Basically, you have an overall mean, and then you relate all of the levels according to the location of the overall mean. So the regressors take more thought in this setup, but some of the contrasts for some of the hypothesis tests are much easier to set up. Okay, I talked about this last time, but I just wanna review it. When do indicator variables actually reflect group means? So indicator regressors, I should say, are just regressors that have ones and zeros only. Um, each regressor must have at least one one. So if these two rules hold, then you can conclude that each regressor is modeling a mean of a group. The first is that each column contains only zeros and ones. Um, the second rule is that each row contains exactly one one. So it must have a single one, but it cannot have more than one one. And of course, you can do the trick I showed last time. You can just multiply out the right-hand side, the design matrix times the beta vector, and use that to interpret your betas. And I kind of like that better because you can always use it, but whatever sticks with you. So here it is. I'm using the same setup as I used before for the two-sample t-test. I have two subjects in group one, two subjects in group two, two and three, two and four. So this is a one-way ANOVA with four levels. And you can see I just have an indicator variable for each of my levels for each group. So this is an indicator for everyone in group one, group two, group three, and group four. Now, since the rules I just outlined hold, um, actually there's one more rule. The sum of the columns must equal a column of ones. So sorry, we need to add that. No, actually, you don't need that, it holds. So, right, each row has exactly one one. And actually, if that holds, then the sum of all your columns will be a column of ones. So since that holds, then we can conclude that beta one is the mean for group one, beta two is the mean for group two, beta three is the mean for group three, and beta four is the mean for group four. So if we would like to test 
the alternative that group two is larger than group three, again, we want our inequality to point at zero. So I'm gonna subtract group three from both sides and I get group two minus group three greater than zero. Well, it should be becoming much easier for you to, um, to put together now. So that contrast will simply be zero, one, minus one, zero, because if I multiply this contrast vector times this beta vector, I get beta two minus beta three, which is the mean for group two minus the mean for group three. So we are having to do more of this translation between statements about means and converting that to betas. Um, this one's a little easier since the betas are directly the means. How about this one? So this is an overall, uh, this is the first F test you're seeing because I'm, I'm testing multiple things at once. Basically the null is that all of the groups have the same mean and that mean is zero. So basically each group has a mean of zero. So the alternative is the opposite of this. And now I'm moving to a two-sided test. So this is just a not equals instead of a greater than less than. That's because this is an F test and F tests are always two-sided. T tests can be one-sided or two-sided. F tests are always two-sided. So the corresponding alternative in this case is that the mean for group one is not equal to zero, or the mean for group two is not equal to zero, or the mean for group three is not equal to zero. So basically, if you reject this hypothesis, um, the only thing you can conclude is at least one mean is different from zero. So uh, this is often referred to as an omnibus test. It doesn't give you a specific result. You would then have to go and query the individual t-tests to figure out which group it was, was that was different from zero. So all you get is at least one group is different from zero. And this is a matrix. So again, this is your first F test. The contrast is achieved through a matrix. There's a different equation than the t-test equation. I don't recall if I went over it before, um, but you kind of don't have to worry about it because um, you just have to specify this matrix in your software. And all you do is you take the contrast for each of these specific tests and you stack them. So group one, um, equal to zero or not equal to zero is just one, zero, zero, zero. So likewise, group two looks like this, group three looks like this, group four looks like this. So you just stack your individual t-test contrast vectors on top of each other. All right, here's where uh, the cell means approach gets a little harder. And that's when you want to test the kind of what I think of as the traditional ANOVA hypotheses. So with a one-way ANOVA, typically you test the main effect. Is there a main effect for factor A? And basically what that's testing is if one of the groups is different from the other. So you could just, all you need is one difference. So that would look something like this. So notice my null, instead of having a zero on the end, I just have group one equal to group two equal to group three equal to group four. The test I just showed you had a zero on the end. So there we were testing means equal to zero, here we're testing means equal to each other. So the alternative then looks different. It's group one not equal to group two, or group one not equal to group three, or et cetera. So all of the two group comparisons. So in this case, if you were to reject the null, that only tells you that at least two groups have means that differ. So I'm just going to, this isn't probably 100% correct, um, but I'm going to use this way of writing it just so it fits, and that just means any of these are unequal to each other. And that, um, you set up the same way. We need a zero somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract group four from everything. So I end up with group one not e minus group four, not equal to group two minus group four, not equal to group three minus group four, and not equal to zero. So you just, you need a zero on the end and again, this is an F test, it's two-sided, so we have um, not equals instead of greater than, less than. So then you have the contrast that you need to stack. I need to stack the contrast for group one minus group four on top of the contrast for group two minus group four on top of the contrast for group three minus group four. So it's gonna look like this. Group one minus group four, group two minus group four, group three minus group four. And that's your contrast matrix for your F-test. 
Um, this is not, there, there are multiple ways of doing this. I could have done everything minus group two. So one minus one, zero, zero. Um, one, let's see, zero minus one, one, zero, zero minus one, zero, one. I could have done it that way as well. Get an equivalent result. Right, so it's not too bad. That wasn't too bad to figure out that you just need to um, figure out all the differences comparing means. But it gets much worse for a two-way ANOVA, especially if you're trying to test the interaction effect. And we will see that in a couple of days. So that's it. Um, make sure you know the rules for what do the regressors look like for a cell mean setup of an ANOVA. Again, typically people are most comfortable with this design matrix setup. And make sure you know what the interpretation of the betas are. And that's specifically why people like this setup because the interpretation of the betas is much more straightforward, more intuitive. That's it. Next time will be the Factor Effects One Way ANOVA. As usual, I invite you to join the Facebook group. It's just Mumford Brain Stats. Um, please join the group and not the page. The page is unexciting. Not a lot of interaction there. So, all right, you have a great day and I will see you next time.